With the release of the new Samsung Galaxy S5, there's also a new version of Samsung's custom user interface that they put on top of Android called TouchWiz UX. In case you aren't familiar, uh, manufacturers usually add their own software on top of Android to help them stand out from other Android devices. So, in this video, I'm going to go through the software that Samsung has added to their latest version of TouchWiz, version 3. Okay, first let's talk about the lock screen. Um, it's normal swipe to unlock, um, or there is also a uh, camera shortcut that you can pull up on to quickly launch the camera. Um, and then also, of course, one of the biggest slash controversial features um, is the fingerprint scanning. So you'll see I have this little symbol here, which wants me to oops, swipe down on it to get into the phone. Moving on to the dock and home screen uh, and the launcher. Uh, basically, you'll notice that the dock is different than your normal Android. And normal Android has it the app thing in the middle, um, and then you can move things around in here, etc. This, the app is always stuck to the right side, um, and then you can put up to four apps to the left of it, and this is what stays on all of the pages. Um, you can't put folders in here, it's nice to note, um, which you can do on regular version of Android. Besides that, as is common in most custom UIs now for Android, you can pinch outward to manage your different home screens, add new ones, also get to your uh, wallpapers, widgets, and your home screen settings. Um, the other big thing um, that everybody seems to be doing now, or at least HTC and Samsung uh, and Google themselves, is if you swipe to the left from your main home screen, um, or your far left home screen, you'll get this, what they call My Magazine, HTC calls Blink Feed, and Google calls Google Now, um, which has cards in here that sort of work like this to some extent, although Google Now is a little bit different. Um, but here you can actually go in and you can manage the different um, type of news that you want and the different social networks that you uh, want to add in here. For some reason, Facebook's not here and I don't know why. Um, something to note. Um, but you can scroll through this and you get images uh, from the different types of news that you chose and you can click into them to get more. You'll also notice that this is all powered by Flipboard for better or for worse. Um, and then you can go to Google Plus. LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. Another change to the home page um, and the launcher is the thing that happens with folders. So normally in Android you can hold on to an app icon and then put it on top of another one and it makes a folder for you with both of them in it. But this doesn't work here. You have to actually pull up to the very top here, hit create folder, uh, enter a name, and then go through the list um, of other apps on the device, hit done in order to create one, which is kind of cumbersome to me um, and seems a little unnecessary. But that's the way that their system does it. You can pull them out, however, apparently, um, but you can't create one without doing that. Changes to the status bar include editable quick settings. Um, so these are settings that you can tap to enable or disable these features. Um, then also, if you tap this button up here at the top right, it gives you a lot more. And then if you tap the pencil, you can actually edit them. Um, you can change by dragging and dropping which ones are available on the main screen um, and which ones are available when you uh, so show all of them. Uh, also, you can in here change the brightness adjustment. So you can turn that on. And what that will do is, if I go back to this, you'll see that you have a brightness slider that you can move up and down and adjust the brightness of your screen or turn it on auto. Um, you also have the ability to do recommended apps. So this is whenever you plug in earphones, uh, you can set which apps show up within the status bar, um, and they show up kind of like where that slider is, uh, right underneath there. Um, so whenever you plug in the headphones, it automatically, for me, it shows Spotify, because that's what I use for my music. So that shows up there, and then also YouTube. Again, you can customize that to whatever you normally use with headphones. Next up, let's talk about the widgets that Samsung has added. Um, so, from the left, we have active applications, which if you pull this out, um, basically just gives you a little number of the active apps that you have. Uh, tapping it then brings you into those and you can choose to end them all or end them individually. 
calendar um, basically has two different calendars, an agenda view and a month view, which is tied to Samsung's actual calendar app. Um, then we have uh, a couple of clocks. We have the dual clock, which shows you one clock in, in your current time zone and one in another time zone of your choosing, and also a digital clock as well. Uh, next we have contacts. Um, you can tap on this and you'll be presented with three different contact widgets. You can either put a contact that if you tap on it, it opens their contact card uh, or tap on it to directly dial them or tap on it to directly text message them. Next we have GeoNews. Um, so if you pull this out and drop it down, you'll see it says my region is okay, which is great. Um, but basically what it does is it gives you uh, information on where you are uh, if there's you know, active wildfires or earthquakes or other things that you need to be aware of that are happening geologically or environmentally. I'm not sure how useful that is, but it's there. Um, and then obviously tapping on it brings you into the app to see more information. Next up we have Kids Mode, um, which is in here, which for some odd reason is in here because it's not a widget, it's an app. Um, same as any of these. Um, but Kids Mode, just so you know, uh, is a way of locking down your device so that only certain apps that you choose um, are available for your kid. Uh, and then any apps that you add to it kind of has this little present that you just saw that they can then tap to unveil their new app. Um, and then you can get out of it by putting in a pin. Next up we have Magnifier, which again, just like the kids thing, is not really a widget, it doesn't show any information, it's just an app. Um, but if you tap on it, it does allow you to use your camera and it just kind of sets it to a certain zoom level uh, with a light. Uh, so that you can use it to, I don't know, read menus if your eyes are going. Memo um, allows you to display one of the memos from the memo app that comes with it on the screen. Just like that, so that's pretty simple. Um, messaging allows you to put um, a thing of all of your messages directly on a screen. Um, keep in mind though that even though this does display them, when you tap on them, if you don't have messaging set as your default, which I don't, I have Hangouts, um, it won't work. So if you use any other text messaging application, you basically can't really use that widget, but to look at them um, from a distance. Music is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you pull that out um, and it allows you to control songs, uh, play them, pause them, uh, sort through them, etc., etc. But again, as with the messaging app, keep in mind that this only works for the music app that Samsung has put on here uh, and won't control Spotify and other things like that. Picture frame allows you to either put one image um, or a few of them just on your home screen for you to look at. Um, you can also change the layout and the intervals of how often they change. As bookmarks is a bookmarking shortcut for all of the shortcuts, or excuse me, all the bookmarks that are available in your internet browser. And again, this is only for the Samsung internet browser, not Chrome um, or Firefox or any of the other browsers that you may use. Next we have the Samsung Galaxy apps uh, widgets. These basically just show you essential apps that are recommended for you. It's their way of kind of pitching you some of their other apps. Okay, next up we have S Health. Um, widgets which are Coach and S Health itself. So Coach, um, once you click into that and you set up all of your stuff, it is a lot of questions, frankly. Um, but if you do, it will tell you ways that you can, you know, in help your health um, or just make you feel really bad about yourself, one or the other. Then there's S Health, which if you pull out here and put on here, will show you your current amount of steps and your goal for steps um, using the pedometer that's built into the device or um, grabbing it from a device that you sync with, like the Gear Fit. Um, if you tap on this, it'll bring you to the S Health app, which we'll go into in a minute. Um, tapping on the heart will actually open the heart uh, rate monitor, which is on the back of the device that you put your finger on, um, which again, we'll also go into in a minute. Next up we have Torch, which if you put on the screen, basically just gives you a flashlight by turning on the LED on the back of the device. The video widget um, does the same thing as the picture frame widget, basically uh, puts a video on your home screen if you wanted to have quick access to one um, un instead of you know photos like the picture album would do. Um, then there's also, and finally, the last widget that comes with it is the weather widget. 
Um, so this is not only weather, obviously, you can see, it is also the time, the date, um, and then you can set it to either your current location or a specific location, and then you tap that little button to refresh it, and then tapping on it will bring you into the weather app. Um, one thing you'll also notice is that all of the stock apps um, have been changed from the phone to the calendar to the gallery even um, to kind of just resemble Samsung's kind of UI that they have throughout the entire thing. Functionally though, they're pretty much the same. There's a few little things here and there, um, but for the most part, it was all just kind of to make it all match and look um, the way that Samsung wanted it to look. Okay, so now on to the apps that Samsung added. Um, we're gonna technically consider the internet one of them because Google removed the normal Android browser and replaced it with Chrome, which this does come with. So they're not replacing it, they just have their own. Um, hell no. So uh, here is the browser. Um, it's very simple. It has some interesting little effects to it. Um, but overall, it's uh, a very simple, normal, uh, browser with not too many settings. Next we have chat on um, which is Basically Samsung's version of WhatsApp and those kinds of you know replacement text messaging apps um, Anyone that has this you can chat with them obviously for free um, It also has some neat features where it can auto translate other languages into your language uh, And then also has a very large capacity for a chat room or a group text um, I, I think it's 1001 people can be in it together. I'm not sure how that would work Sounds pretty chaotic to me, but it's a selling point for them. Um, so that is chat on. Next one, which you saw for a split second earlier is Memo. Um, and this is a very simple um, memo taking app. Then we have My Files, um, which is a file browser um, that has a nice interface compared to some of the ones that you'll get out of the Android uh, market. Um, so that's pretty much that. After that, we have one of the bigger ones, which is S Health. Uh, S Health is basically an all-around app for monitoring steps from the pedometer, um, heart rate from the heart rate monitor, which you can see the demonstration of how to use that right there. Um, it's actually, um, it works pretty well, frankly, so long as you hold your finger directly, you know, like this behind it, as opposed to this, um, which is a little unnatural, but whatever, taking your heart rate sensor, that's fine. Um, and also it keeps track of calories, weight, um, and all of that fun stuff as well that you can see here. Next we have S Voice, um, which is basically Samsung's version of Siri. You can say things like, call Bob, text Susan, what's the weather, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it provides a human-like feedback to improve your experience. Uh, you can get to it by double tapping the home button. Find restaurants near me. And um, it works relatively well, um, very similar to, say, Siri, etc. Samsung Apps is an app store created by Samsung um, that just has all of their um, apps that they either like a lot or uh, ones that work specifically for your, uh, your specific device. So this, these would be the Galaxy Essentials, the GIFs, etc. And lastly, we have a voice recorder which is pretty simple. It lets you record um, conversations um, or your own voice, for example. Uh, and it even has little modes to help with that. I'm not sure exactly what they do, but apparently they do something. Um, and then you can go through your recordings there as well. Uh, and that's pretty much it, it's very simple. And there you go. I tried to keep it short, but just like with my HTC Sense walkthrough, I might have gotten carried away. Oh well. Hope it helped uh, some of you get a closer look at the UI and feel free to reach out to me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, um, all linked in the description below as usual. Thanks for watching.